community and audience. Welcome back to Solutionary TV. Waking Up Solutionary TV presents Ascension Series. I am your co-host, Dr. Tatiana. We have my co-host, Genesee Roy, with us tonight. And just as we have been bringing in all this yumminess around Ascension, we are not letting you down. We're taking it to a whole new level, aren't we, Genesee? Oh, my goodness. I drove seven hours, pedal to the metal, to meet the person I want to be when I grow up tonight, <laughs> Michelle, without further yeah. ado, right? Yes. Wow. Michelle oh, fantasy. Come but, Thank you, but ladies. I've got, to, I've got to give you due kudos, Michelle, because our audience doesn't know, not all of them anyway, what it took, number one, for you to get to where you are physically and figuratively. So let me, let me give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of trumping up for all the characteristics that you have loaded with this. Number one, she is holding space for our community and staying awake. She is down in South Africa. This is not a comfortable hour for her to be coming on live, and we didn't want to have it any other way, and she was very gracious to accommodate us. But Michelle has been an Ascension Way shower. She has been a very, very early intuitive advocate for the planet and helping raise the vibration bringing grids back into harmony and alignment, vortexes back into purposefulness, and moving this entire system from our third dimensional realm into its proper alignment through fourth and fifth dimension. She is the founder and also the director of Aurora's Ascension Academy. She has so many kudos behind her name, but we're just going to let her tell you a little bit more. Now it's official. Michelle, please. Tell everybody about yourself and welcome. Thank you so much, um, Tatiana and Genesee. And my gosh, Genesee, that was uh, a huge compliment. Thank you, my darling. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was really great. Um, yes, gosh, there's so much to share. And I just want to say thank you to you, Tatiana and Genesee, for making this um, opportunity available to me. And it's it, does, it gives me great joy to be sharing with you, even though um, it is this hour. And um, I must also say, this isn't such a terrible hour because very often I find, uh, my husband and I find ourselves uh, awake from 1 to 2 a.m. in the morning anyway. So <laughs> it's all cool. Yeah. I am, you know, I am, I, there's so many things that make me who I am. But the most important one I feel is this journey that I am on, which is my spiritual journey, which is not separate from what I experience on a day-to-day -day, on a day-to-day -day basis in my life. So my spiritual journey and my day-to-day -day living experience is one and the same thing. Um, it's you know I live, eat, sleep, uh, drink, dream, everything. This so. Um, what more <laughs> would you like me to share with you, um, Tatiana, in relation to, you know, who I am and what I do um, that fits into the, the whole questions and answers things? So I'd like to make the best of uh, our time here. So um, where would you like me to, to, to direct this? Well, thank you, Michelle. That's very gracious of you because sometimes we can just have so much that we want to share. We spill over, mm -hmm. but let's kind of start. I was introduced to your work through a friend and colleague that had said, you know, I've been doing this really important work around the globe. Um, recently, I was over in Eastern Europe and we were turning crystals in the ground, trying to reset in harmony and balance some of these natural vortices along this earth and, and cosmic grid that we're on. And I went, say what? What, what are you doing? <laughs> and, and I realized, I, I'm going to mention her just in case she's watching, Ginger Sugino, thank you for connecting me with Michelle. I have been following your work, Michelle, for quite some time. And I knew that if the time was right and appropriate that we were just, we had to have you on. And Solutionary TV has evolved because all of us are evolving. I mean, you're a mother, you, you have a very active home life, you have an active practice in teaching, you have your own radio show. I understand it started out, you know, as a coaching practice and led to books and practicums and doing a show. And it, it meant to be Ascension Series. Waking Up Solutionary TV is really about waking everybody up to what's really happening right now. We can only go after some of these solutions that our technology and education and government 
when people really get lucid to the fact that they are divinity, that we are all connected, we are all fractalized oneness. And as soon as we start working together in harmony, we can see that we're actually also connected to all sentient life on the globe. And then, then and only then, Michelle, can people understand some of this important work that you're doing? So when we did a little play on Q&A, part of the... Um, Part of the big discussion is how do you go from being someone who is a business owner, a businesswoman, a professional person that exists in this world on a much more 3D and mainstream level and then change and, and, and literally find yourself metamorphosizing into this kind of powerful work, like helping people move through ascension concepts? Yeah, yeah. You know, my, my path started back in um, 1996. Um, it, it's been a really incredible journey because I was married to a man um, where there was, uh, it, it was domestic violence, violence from start to finish. And as a result of that very challenging relationship, it pushed me to uh, go deeper and deeper into myself in order to understand what this torment and torture was all about. Anyway, in 1996, um, after finding someone who was doing healing on me and helping me to understand what karma was, uh, the Ascended Masters made contact with me. And the contact was made in a, a healing session, in fact, that I was having. I'd never heard of the Ascended Masters before. I did not know who their names were, nothing like that. Anyway, this being uh, who called himself Kutumi uh, then began communicating to me via the, the therapist who was working with me. And um, I then began channeling this, uh, this ascended master. And it was, it was in itself the most in, incredible journey of... Um, inner disclosure, inner realization, inner awakening that I can never um, experience had I not gone through what, I, what I'd been through over the past 22 years. So um, with, the, with the opening up to the Ascended Masters and the New Age religion and, um, you know, I had already had a calling. I felt very connected to extraterrestrial beings. Um, I would feel and sense this presence of um, what I called star beings. And um, not knowing what it was, you, you, you kind of like find your way. And my way was a solitary path. I've had to find my way stumbling and falling and picking myself up back again. I've never really had teachers that have led the path uh, before me or really guided me or mentored me. So that also equipped me with immense amounts of wisdom and um, discernment. But self-awareness was the main thing that... Um, got me to to where I am now so during from 1996 until 2016 I was actively working uh, serving the ascended masters uh, the archangels and uh, some angels and um, the my, my work with the ascended masters was very very um, uh, intertwined with my life as I say I don't separate the two and it was a very very successful uh, 21 years in totality working as a channel to the Ascended Master to me to uh, Mary Magdalene, Saint Germain and a couple of other ones and Archangel Michael, uh, Metatron, these were the Archangels that we were working with. I have always had a nagging feeling inside of me during the time that I was serving the New Age religion. And it was something that was in the back of my mind that just nagged and nagged. And the nagging was this fear that I'm serving the dark side without realizing it. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, during the time that I channeled, 
there was always a part of me that didn't quite a hundred percent trust it. It was, it was I was my own worst skeptic when it came to to this. Anyway, um, 2014, I had health issues. Um, I, I lost my gallbladder, and uh, my gallbladder contained 422 gallstones. I mean, look at the numerology there, and my goodness, 422 <laughs> gallstones, that's a lot of resentment and anger. And this is the one thing that I realized is when you are working um, and serving a closed source system, your energy is what is used. Um, I then discovered that as a channel, these beings are using my central nervous system, my immune system, my adrenals are draining, and um, that is why I was really struggling with my health a lot of the times. So three months after my gallbladder was removed, I was diagnosed with stage three melanoma cancer that had spread to my lymphs. So 2014 was a massive wake-up call for me in terms of where all of this energy was going. I was um, fed up with the intensity of the path. And one of the things that I found on this path is that the uh, it, it was a repetition of information, the constant regurgitation of certain things, but didn't really affect serious change. It was, um, I call the new age religion, um, the band age band aid religion, because it, it, it just focus, focuses on, the, on um, just covering up the problem rather than getting to the core of the issue. And that is based on my experience with the new age. I'm not saying this is everyone's experience. I'm sharing with you my truth and what my experience has been. And, you know, that's, if it resonates with you, that's awesome. If not, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the, what, what matters is that whatever ounce of truth there is in this, that um, it touches the parts of you that 100% know the undefiled, incorruptible, organic truth um, about our planet and about ourselves. And this is what's awakening now. Mm -hmm. I began having massive shifts, realizations, epiphanies, um, this this full body knowing, realization that there is a good God and that there's a bad God. Um, I broke away from religion at the age of 15 because every church denomination I went to would get very angry with me for asking certain questions that they couldn't answer. And it was my journey from the age of 15 that got me eventually onto the new age path. And um, so the realization of this uh, good God and uh, imposter God then had also brought about huge shifts and changes. And with these um, intense shifts that I was going through, uh, serving in the position that I am, my questioning, my... Um, my process work got deeper and deeper and my intentions around what I was commanding for my life had so much energy behind it that um, this uh, authentic inner awakening uh, unfolded at such an accelerated rate in the most amazing ways. Um, that when it actually happened, there was this combination of, oh, my God, what have I done? And, oh, thank good God, at last. It is, the bubble is burst. The ascended masters are imposter spirits. Uh, the new age religion is the false ascension timeline herding masses of innocent really good souls into um, deeper levels of this closed source system, uh, which 
just keeps uh, feeding people into the astral planes and attaching their their chakras, their consciousness, and their bodies to these these astral planes. So that's why it's been an extraordinary um, twenty three years. Um, August was exactly a year ago that I broke away from the New Age religion and um, recognized these um, astral plane ascended, uh, in, well, they're not fully ascended, they are partially ascended beings that have been involved in directing our energies into systems that do not support our highest good. And when I realized that, you know, the warrior in me just kind of like broke loose and it was, I will not allow these imposters to spiritually abuse my brothers and sisters on planet Earth anymore. And this really fired me up to um, become, uh, to, not to become actually, to embody more of my fully enlightened good God self. And um, that already got the ball rolling where, um, you know, my, my group collapsed. Um, clients that had been with me for more than a decade were just leaving, going in new directions. And it's, it's scary, you know, when you see your life's work, 21 years of your life's work, just now, you know, you can't do anything with it because um, there was some really good wisdom in there. I, I must say there was a lot of good information in there, but amongst all of this really amazing information were these little tricks that would um, still keep us on this closed wheel of, of karma rather than an open source system that supports and is pro-human ascension. Wow. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, Perfect. you covered a lot. <laughs> you covered so much. And I first want to acknowledge the fact that everything that you're sharing is experiential. There are many followers out there and there is now more emerging leaders, but there's always a disproportionate amount of followers to leaders. And maybe there's there's good reason for that. We know the fact that experiencing ourself requires a fastidiousness and discipline and it requires some courage and it also requires a lot of responsibility because others are going to hold you accountable to what it is that they believe that you have conveyed to them as they've interpreted it. And, and by golly, you better know what the answer is because they've been listening to you. So I, I've got so much compassion for what you've gone through in your evolution. Uh, Genesee and I both have shared quite a bit about our own personal witness and experience, which is why we do the show, why we welcome the community. We are way showers, but we don't know everything. It's still a witness that is something we're moving through. And Genesee, we just recently were talking about the, the false sense of light, you know, false light. So maybe you would enjoy asking, you know, Michelle some questions about what that shift was to go from following a religion that ultimately ends up revealing so much more. I kind of want to hand you the talking stick. Thank you so much, because I know you have a lot to say, Tatiana, about this. You and I have so many in-depth conversations about this. So thank you for giving me the opportunity, because, Michelle, I um, I haven't been very public with some of my opinions, but I have to say, when I said in the beginning of the show that um, I want to grow up and be you, basically, <laughs> it's, it's 100% truth. Um, I feel like your what everything you've just explained parallels my own journey and experience last august uh mm. i was triggered in the exact same way right around the eclipse i had and this is where i want to ask the question is um i had just um reconciled what i would call my uh the totality of my soul causal body connection right i i let go of that low self that personality and stepped into the totality of who I am without any false master, any shadow, anything I'm giving my power over to. And 
in that, I I was triggered through that by gridding. And I was called through all of 2017 to go out and grid North America with crystals and stones. And I had no clue. Um, I was I I didn't know. I just I just followed my own intuitive guidance that I needed to go out and connect with the land and do healing for myself. But I know this is a big part of what you do. And um, and I'd love to know um, in that, how did you then step away from the 21 year career of channeling and bringing through and being kind of attached to that that history and then let go completely of all of that and it seems like you've stepped into this um this planetary healer work right which is interesting and i'm sorry this is a self-serving question because i feel i feel like you you have the answer as to why why maybe it's it's such a parallel to my own path and what I, what happened to me when i went through the same thing of of letting go of those kind of false prophets and and what not outside well wow great questions thank you um genesee the oh gosh gotta sit on the leg and get comfortable um the you know the the main thing that i had to do was remain focused on what was real and what was true because it was a huge blow not just to to me but to a number of uh, my clients who become friends, who've been, uh, you know, walking this path with path with me, as I say, for more than a decade, some of them, and um, I had to be aware of what was authentic, what was true, what was real. So, amongst all of this madness, um, I mean, I had, was disillusioned in everything pertaining to that. So, the one thing I had to say to myself is, what is real? What is real here? I know goodness is real because I experience goodness in my heart. I experience good people. So I know that is real. I know I'm a good person. What is the next thing? Love. I know love is real. So goodness and love. Those were the two things I held on to Genesee was goodness and love and the intention inside of myself that only those frequencies undefiled, incorruptible, pure, organic goodness and living love awaken inside of me and drive out all of the darkness, drive out all of the BS because I was at the end of my rope of this constant, you know, uh, cloak and daggers and smoke screens and never quite knowing where or what. And I found that was a big thing around the new age energies. You don't quite know if you fixed or not, you know, you're like kind of there, but you're not kind of thing. So um, the planetary work began with me in, uh, I did my first planetary job, <laughs> if I can call it that, in 1999 in Zimbabwe. So if I look at all of the work that I've done over the years, um, I did, I went into huge panic that I had contributed to the reversal of certain grid systems. I do know I was involved in certain reversal work because I did work with uh, the Archangel Metatron. Um, and Metatron is a reversal uh, grid. It reverses our DNA. So I had to, I spent hours in meditation, reflecting, um, asking for forgiveness, connecting with Mother Earth, asking for her forgiveness for my ignorance. And the, 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 the um, thing that kept on coming back to me was Mother Earth's unconditional love and gratitude to me for never ever um, giving up on finding the truth and the truth being that we've been led down a path for the past 17 years, specifically the year 2000 through to the year 2017. So going forward with the work, I then just focused on, as I said, everything embodying goodness and living love and everything that I have been involved in knowingly and unknowingly um, that I now take full responsibility for that energy and whatever I'm doing is upgrading um, the grids, 
belay lines, anything that I've done that reversed, I've taken full responsibility for. As a result, <laughs> it's resulted in the most extraordinary reconnection with Mother Earth, um, a reconnection with the uh, elemental uh, body of nature, which is also undergoing its huge transformation, understanding that um, our DNA is waking up in ways that certain energies don't want it to wake up. And Mother Earth is driving a lot of the energy and the consciousness uh, inside uh, and uh, inspiring us to do this planetary work. And what I have found is that planetary good workers, it's as if our entire body is a barometer. It's a pendulum. It's, uh, it's, we just know it's the body will take you. You will find yourself doing things, sensing things, anchoring, downloading things. You don't necessarily understand what the, um, what the details are, but as long as the intention is coming from the place of purity, undefiled, incorruptible, goodness, living love and benevolence, we are then serving the upliftment of this planet. And what you are doing, uh, Genesee, is kind of like how I always have done my earth work. I respond to my body. Um, so... As I say, yes, I, I, I read energies based on how my body feels. And mm. you, it sounds like you're able to do the same thing. It's validating to hear that. I was always, I questioned because I, like you, never had mentors or teachers. And when I was triggered by my own awakening, I just knew I had to get to Sedona. I did not know mm. why. And once I was there, I was I found myself in places, had magical experiences. and was inspired to grid, but had no clue what I was doing. There was no protocol. And in that I questioned because I know so many have come out and said, this is how you grid. This is what you need to be downloaded with. And I never did it from that place. So it's validating to hear or have this reflection in you, uh, who it sounds like has a lot of the same experiences that, you know, as, lo as long as the heart's centered and, and, it's all of you and and through that divine heart centered will and appreciation for life and what we have and an earth that it's it's of the best and highest attention so thank you that is very very helpful to hear <laughs> welcome and you know what genesee one thing i found is i think a lot of people um secretly feel um uh, disconnected or uh, useless because they're not hearing voices and they're not seeing things. Um, you know, I want to say to everyone who doesn't experience that, be grateful because our experience now is what I call an inside job. It's a 100% inside job. So um, when your body is telling you yes and no, you have the per perfect discernment technology in your midst. <laughs> so um, when you listen to your body, you, you can rest assured that you've pretty much got um, an accurate uh, sense of what's going up or down, in or out, left or right. <laughs> mm. Thank you. you know, Michelle, if I can segue real quick. Thank you, Genesee. I I recognize in all this experience and the responsibility of being an experiencer. When you're an experiencer and you're a personal witness, you don't really need as much corroborating um, explanation and evidence from another experiencer because very often there is a, a reaffirmation, a collation of facts and a sensory experience that gives you a real strong yes. And, and let's talk a little bit about two things. One, why is it so important for the ascension of the planet that we need to be doing some regrading? What happened to those, those grids? And that's a big and loaded question, Michelle and Genesee, an area with which you both have experience and expertise. But the second question I don't want to miss is because we are always fine tuning our antenna, we're always fine tuning our intuitive grid system, our intuitive 
um, ability to harness divine wisdom, what do we do when we realize that we have been paying attention to what we would have considered to be false light or a being that really was not holding our highest and greatest good and, and the cleanest work going forward? So let's start with question number one. Michelle, what are your thoughts on that? Why, why do we need to change the grids or, or uh, attend to them now? We, we need to see the planetary grids as a uh, reflection of our central nervous system and our body. And, um, you know, as within, so without, as above, so below. And the planetary brain has been severely traumatized and abused um, by forces uh, who see us as the enemy. Um, anyone pro-human life, those of us who are of the original uh, Christos mission team. And um, what happened was, um, I mean, this goes back 20 million years ago to the very first uh, wars that broke out, the Orion Wars, which is about 20 million years ago. So that's when a lot of the, the issues started. Then we can you know, fast forward to um, 250,000 years ago when the Anunnaki arrived and the, um, the collaborations that they formed and what their intention was coming here. Now, these beings, uh, as we know, have advanced technology. They uh, were aware of what our planet uh, con con contains uh, in terms of the resources physically, but also the spiritual resources that are available within um, the natural human being. Mm -hmm. So in order to, to hijack that energy, to use that energy to fuel their finite system, they implanted uh, our planet with um, what we call reversal uh, crystals, where massive crystals that are huge um, have been turned up, were turned upside down into the planet. What that thing did was it reversed everything. So we were literally taken from an inner centered, inner focused um, uh, race of beings to everything being externalized. So we look outside of ourselves for love, for comfort, for acknowledgement. Um, we look outside of ourselves uh, to connect with God, to, to validate our worth. And um, so us doing this work now is essential because we are, we've are we reset a number of those grids already. Uh, and Ginger was with us in Romania um, doing some of that work. Um, and resetting these grids is for the purpose of returning us to our natural, organic, undefiled, incorruptible, pure blueprint. So the planetary grids are influenced by a number of different technologies. Um, I'm sure you've heard of some of them. Um, Harp is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Gwen is another one of them. Uh, CERN plays uh, a lot of... Um, uh, plays a big role in uh, the technology that impacts us. So this, this, it's, it's like it's a psycho spiritual warfare that's being played out, um, which the majority of our planet is unaware of. So mm -hmm. the planetary grids, in actual fact, Tatiana, at the end of the day, are supported and upgraded by us doing all the soul work that is needed on ourselves to, um, you, I want to say get a handle, but it's more than that. It's about so that we can really understand what it means to take responsibility for ourselves, to understand what it means to emotionally mature and have the tools at our disposal to neutralize and be objective because these our planetary grids have been used, in other words, hijacked and used against us to mind control the planet, to um, 
to emanate these extremely low frequencies, which cause huge anxiety amongst people. And I mean, uh, there are so many stories on the web now uh, validating this, confirming all of these stories. So us working on ourselves becomes the, um, uh, it's almost like the mirror process of upgrading and healing Mother Earth's grids. Our central nervous system healing becomes hers. Every upgrade to our inner self is an upgrade to the planetary grids. So if we, in actual fact, we can't heal the planetary grids if everyone is going to choose to just remain in their um, uncomfortable comfort zones and um, give lip service and complain about everything that's wrong but not willing to actually put their money and energy where their mouth is and start looking at their internal process, their internal journey, and seeing that the external world is a reflection of what uh, is going on on the inside. So the planetary grids are also pushing us because Mother Earth as a being and as a consciousness, she's undergoing huge healing because the 5D ascension timeline was hijacked. Um, the uh, energies of the twin planets, Tara and Tiamat, their main crystal generators were exploded. It exploded their morphogenetic fields. So these twin planets have fragments of their bodies floating out in space. That means it's fragments of our 5D bodies that are also floating out in space. And what we are doing now is reclaiming all these fragmented aspects of our multidimensional selves and Mother Earth's body as well, because 3D Earth was her lower formed body. 5D Earth is the timeline we are um, healing now. And 7D Earth, which is Gaia, also known as Aramatena, that is where we are headed towards. 7D Earth is the, um, the true ascension timeline so um that is that's why doing our own soul work and the planetary work together is um it's almost uh, uh, a no-brainer <laughs> in actual fact when you really think about it, it all makes sense well you know it it's a lot to swallow and for many in our audience they're going to go yep yep i know exactly what michelle's talking about and others are going to go not so much and and, and we want them to be able to be working from their own intuitive prowess, Michelle. I know that you know that those you work with are more empowered when they know how to get their own answers. And when we can all come together as a collaborative and cooperative community and we can piece together those intuitive tidbits of wisdom that allow us to be able to operate with high efficiency and supporting some of these massive transition pieces that we need to be doing, then, then we are all blessed by there being that many more that are tuned in and listening. So considering the weight of where you went and how easy it can be, and I'm not saying across the board, but how easy it can be to um, feel like the truth as you're downloading it, the spiritual witness as you are calling in higher frequencies from ascended beings, ascended masters would be gods with lower G. How do you recommend, and Genesee, jump on in on this. Um, ladies, I'm going to hand it over to both of you. How do we use discernment to make certain that we are actually getting authentic information from the highest, cleanest source? To begin with, Tatiana, we need to go back to ourselves. Um, the... The inner connection is what we are re, uh, reinstating here. Um, what I did again, as I said, I can only go back to my own experience, is I chose to focus on connecting with uh, all beings of benevolence who are supporting the pro-human ascension timelines. So um, when it came to wanting to uh, form uh, healthy relationships with the beings of benevolence I could sense, I have been 
very, very specific in the wording that I use. Um, I'm a little OCD in actual fact when it comes to the wording that I use, but I do that because of what I've experienced. So um, I always use the words uh, living love, living light, pro-human ascension, beings of benevolence, authentic living light, um, the one and only true good God, the supreme creatrix of our good God. So those are the things that I focus on when it comes to doing my prayers, my intentions, when I'm meditating, I'm connecting to the source of benevolence and goodness inside of myself and inviting <clears throat> that almighty, benevolent, living presence of divinity, undefiled, incorruptible um, uh, holiness to awaken inside of me, the one and only true son of our good God, the authentic Yeshua, that is the only energy I will permit to connect with me, and it's, it's an inner invitation. I dropped all external connections eventually, um, focusing on all these different uh, protection techniques, and I brought it back to myself, my inner connection to this authentic power of inexhaustible organic vitality that exists inside of me. And it's taken time to build the trust and confidence in that because I did experience huge psychic attack after leaving the new age um, religion. So there was all of those things to deal with as well. So discernment became such an important thing for me. So that is what's worked for me. If you are connecting to a person or a source and there's any part of you that doesn't feel comfortable with it, you can command that energy to reveal its authentic to in intention to you immediately. And if it refuses to reveal its authentic intention, you command it to leave your space immediately. Um, but it's that inner connection that I have found to be the most reliable and trustworthy connection mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. then. Thank you. Thank you. That was really succinct. And I, I can be in alignment with you on that, that um, there is, if we don't ask, if we're so quick to be honored by a being that even feels like it's five degrees north of us, we can too quickly cast out the sovereignty and the power that is ours uniquely to discern at the level you're talking about. And, and by doing that, kind of go through a spiritual bypass. Um, I've talked with Genesee a little bit about this and how we are able to draw down in our multidimensionality um, exactly what we need to integrate and be that much more present. Genesee, let's let's play with this a little bit. Um, multidimensionality and being in a place of discernment. Go, girl. <laughs> I want to hear yours, Tatiana. You have so many good, good stories about this as well, and you never get to share. I feel like this is right in your wheelhouse, especially with what's right behind you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I, I will be happy to say, you know, for those that are looking for more meditation tools, they're looking for more attunement tools. Um, I, I'm going to touch on Michelle just for five minutes. The journey that she took is the journey that she needed to take. She may have some regrets along the way, and many of us do have regrets. She may have wished that she had this level of um, spiritual acuity from the get-go, but all of us are on a journey that reveals itself to us. And I I had an ayahuasca experience, Michelle, just to be really straight up, where the the voice that was that inner that inner guidance, that um uh the wisdom that was leading the session was very clear to let me know it didn't matter whether I was talking about <coughs> a concept or a Luciferian concept, that they were all relevant to the ever-present balance. And while that may not have been deceitful and a lie, at the same time, we get to choose which energy do we want to run. And sometimes that discernment is really a, a challenge and, and an experience we have to go through so that we come out the other end with a lot more expertise. So I, I work with meditations. I've got a wonderful you know, brass pyramid behind me that <coughs> I, um, definitely magnifies and gives me a stronger sense 
of, of how big of a vortex I can create around the journeys that I do to source. And I, I'm gracious, of course, that Genesee acknowledges that. She and I had an amazing time in Mount Shasta at a pyramid that also had been created with the same kinds of intention and specifications. But but let's take it back, ladies. We're talking about gridding. We're talking about just talking about being our own, our own intuitive, um, our own intuitive profit if, if we're going to be really clear our own personal way shower so that we can run our energy first and then serve others next what is really happening with this ascension ladies michelle genesee what are you feeling that our particular audience needs to hear about why some of these tools and why this languaging is so important what are they actually getting prepared for gals what is this ascension telling them to be stepping into Genesee, you got go. <laughs> <laughs> what is the ascension stepping into? Uh, wow, that's such a loaded and personal question because for me, what I'm stepping into is more of me. <laughs> and so um, anytime somebody talks about, you know, um, Michelle, how you said, some people think we're bringing in a 5D version of, of Gaia or the 7D. You know, I hear all of this and I, I say, great, great, great. But I say, I'm living my best ascension every single day. And Michelle, you triggered me into something as you were talking and how I explain it or how I always resonate with um, where I am is, and it's always through heart center, but anytime I'm running an old timeline, um, or something that's already been done, my entire life just kind of slows down and everything feels like I'm running through quicksand in life. And, and, and my oscillation cycles between ascension happen so quick, so, so, um, so strong. They're so resonant with my authentic uh, way that I'm living now that I'm triggered within a few hours if I'm stepping off of my most harmonious and aligned timeline. And I don't know if that makes sense when I say it out loud. Does that make sense to both of you? Does that resonate at all? It's messy. Yeah. Yeah. Michelle, I, I actually would love for you to go into that because you believed you were doing the highest work that was available to you at the time when you were doing all these channelings. I was listening to all these ascended masters and higher beings that many are very much in alignment with and are honoring as uh, a, a host of heaven or a cacophony of, of that kind of middle ground between those of us that are uh, moving through the three and the four and the five and the six and then somewhere between sixth and, and nine up into 12, perhaps d density, where, where we're really getting back to the throne of a, of a divine creator, what they call the, um, you know, the, that, that one source. So when, when you're talking about the fact that at one point you believed that you were getting those answers and where you are now, what was the real pivot and transition point? What was it that kind of melted away and revealed to you where the next phase and the next stage of your being able to, to, to intuit the purity of the message uh, had become obvious? Um, it was, gosh, it wasn't one specific experience. It was <clears throat> um, a, a sequence of events over a very short space of time. Um, it was, uh, oh gosh, I, I wish I could remember the actual first thing that triggered it. But as I said, it was just this blur of events that happened. But the main thing was that um, I had gotten this, this sense, this feeling that something wasn't right. Um, I was feeling frustration. I was feeling a certain irritation around the work. I was... Um, I, I was seeing things that weren't making sense in terms of uh, the constant rep repetition of information without there ever really being any um, uh, flesh to it that could shift the things where I needed shifting. So again, it's a little bit difficult to, to describe because it was all in relation to um, my inner journey and what I was going through inwardly, and uh, my my inner my inner space um, is pretty intense. Um, you know, 
during the time, especially during the time of the channeling, because of the amount of work I was doing, that was the other thing. But it was, um, I came across uh, an article uh, that had some information regarding the uh, Ascended Masters. And when I read it, it was like an electric shock that went through my body. And I just knew it was true. And not long after that, um, I think I actually came across, uh, was it Corey Good? Uh, a friend of mine, I come, yes, I come across some information that Corey had given uh, to David Wilcock in one of their interviews. And um, it was describing the whole channeling process and how these beings do this. So it was a, it was a huge wake up, but it was also, uh, as I say, a big relief because deep down inside of myself, as I say, I think I knew that this was, um, it wasn't what it, what it made out to be it was. Um, I take a lot of comfort knowing that I always intended to be aligned with the uh, the purest truth, the most benevolent of energies. And I've accepted that my 21 years in the New Age religion was for a reason, because of what I'm now able to help people with, to help them transition through, to deal with the spiritual abuse um, that comes from any kind of controlling uh, religion. And... Um, to, uh, gosh, sorry, I'm at a loss for words here, to, to always just understand that, like you said, um, Tatiana, our, our journey is our journey. I needed to, to walk this path, but I also firmly believe at the end of the day that my intention to be aligned um, with what is good, to be part of that benevolence is what uh, led to all my inner disclosures happening. And um, as I say, part of it is a blur because it was such a huge shock. Um, it was that, <clears throat> as I say, that, oh my God, what have I done realization where um, it, the things that go through your mind, that go through your your, your being and your, your body with, with the shock that, done this um but i also understand that that shocking revelation is what was um which was a gift that was given to me at precisely the time i needed it because this information was revealed to me um what uh, four months before the closing of the 2017 Ascension Gateways. So I have to also see the purpose in this. There's so much more to it, um, Tatiana and Genesee, when I really look into the finer details of it. Because towards the end of my time channeling, um, the energy of Ketumi Agrippa was not just Ketumi anymore, it had taken on this um, frequency of Agrippa. And it was a profound energy, an extremely, um, you know, beneficial energy to a point. And once the uh, breakaway happened, um, there were interactions that I'd had with Ptumi Agrippa. Um, but at the end of the day, I made the decision to have a complete clean break because I did not feel I could trust the um, intentions behind what they were doing with me, uh, even if it was a grooming process to be able to um, now help people uh, leave the new age religion, I still did not feel safe in, in, in that space. But um, the, the way it happened, as I say, was so many different things which began in 2014 and then culminated in August 2017 where um, it was like the words were on my screen and I knew it was true and it just it unraveled from there. So I trust I've answered your question correctly. Oh, there's there's no correct or incorrect. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Let me put it that way. <laughs> but, but, you know, there's it's interesting. We had a show just a little ways back where we were talking with Joy Jackson and we were 
we were addressing the relevance of some of the wisdom that's come through the law of one and what has come out through, you know, um, raw to rare. And, and the fact that humanity is so naturally engendered to fall to its knees to, like I said, a being or an entity that's just five degrees north of us. And, um, and, I've, and I've studied that and I've come to really understand, um, yes, it is engineering. Yes, it probably is DNA. But we aren't going to be able to stand into a place of discerning if we don't start taking risks and being able to dial up our own personal antenna yes. and really yes. go deeper. And Michelle, that's what I'm hearing you say. And Genesee is what she said. Why, what was she doing in Sedona Gridding? Nobody taught her how. Because you were getting the divine data download, Genesee. Yes. You're just as entitled to that truth. And we're already wrapping up on the hour, ladies. And what we really also want to do, we want to promote some of what you're offering out there right now. Uh, Michelle, you are leading retreats you have all over the globe. You are leading projects that are helping to alleviate some of the burdens of Mother Earth moving into her, her Gaia form. And there's some complexity around that. And you have an academy. Can you tell our listening audience a bit about the work you're doing right now so they know where to find you? Yes, thank you. I'd love to. Um, we are about to start um, a, a new Earth Guardian. I call them Earth Guardian projects because it is every person who is a natural Earth Guardian who feels the calling to do this work. And it's a combination of personal soul work and then working on um, Mother Earth's grids as well. So the main body of work around the planetary grids is a, a body of work called the Sacred Chronicles of Aurora. And uh, each project is a chapter. You don't have to start a chapter one. You can step in at any point. And we proceed on 9-11 um, with our next project. It's called uh, Uniting the Four Living Kingdoms, the End of the War Game. And basically what we are doing is collapsing the Armageddon software and all of the Armageddon architecture that was implanted into our planet at the time of 9-11. So we are going back, uh, well, we kind of like going back into the timelines, connecting with that energy there. And from here and now, we are, we are removing these implants. So as we work in removing the Armageddon consciousness within ourselves, that implanting is the warring, the violence, the battle of the sexes within ourselves, our masculine and feminine self at war with each other. So please remember it boils down to one thing this is an inside job and whatever we do on the inside is going to naturally shift everything on the outside that project is going to run for 12 weeks as i say focusing on clearing out the armageddon software then <clears throat> on the 12th of the 12th uh, 2018 we begin with another project which is um the next stage chapter five these all kind of like work with each other and um, we are preparing the energy for anchoring in the living law of oneness code. So we're sweeping out the Armageddon software and we are replacing it with these living law of oneness codes. And we're traveling to Egypt in February 2019. We are going to Amarna, which is Akhenaten's um, stomping ground. We know he unfortunately failed in his mission of anchoring the law of one on earth. But we are going in with the living law of oneness code. So it's the oneness within, that living law of oneness in ourselves that we will be um, anchoring in the lands of Egypt. We are those conduits, those mechanisms anchoring that energy. Then in May 2019, we'll be in Stonehenge clearing up the Nephilim reversal grids there and um, the reptilian infiltrations in Stonehenge, which link through to the Giza um, Stargate, Stargate uh, 4 in Egypt which impacts Stargate 10 in Iran and Iraq. So we're clearing all those timelines as well. So we're balancing the energies at these major strongholds of the negative uh, alien agendas. So this work is not for the faint of heart because a number of times I get my ass horribly kicked. <laughs> because... <laughs> 
you know, we um, you come up against uh, energies that don't want us to succeed in what we're doing. And um, I was in Sedona in February and I was in Raleigh in February, the beginning of this year. And, um, yeah, I mean, just the intensity of the energies doing the work in Sedona was, was quite something to... Um, to digest but at the end of the day this work is necessary it's it's not for everyone but if you feel the calling in every bone of your body to um, work with mother earth to her planetary grids her crystal grids everything um, is a part of us as much as it is a part of her so um, yeah very excited about all of these and um, all of these projects that we are doing are available on my Aurora Online Ascension Academy. So just type in Aurora Ascension Academy. It will take you to the website. MichelleManders.com is my main website where you'll also find most of what you want to do. Um, my YouTube channel is tons of free uh, stuff, including all our Soul Chat Radio uh, episodes. It's also got loads and loads of wisdom, and that's our free Ascension support platform. So uh, I think I covered it all. <laughs> I, I think you actually might have. Genesee, any last thoughts while we have got the the epitome of what you want to be when you grow up? Because when we left the we we're <laughs> yes. going to South Africa and sleep time and circadian rhythms. Your closing thoughts. <laughs> Yes, my closing thought, I know a lot of what Michelle um, likes to teach as well as this unity consciousness. And so uh, for me, moving into the unity plane of consciousness, it was that time when I had to let go of the low self and let go of what I had understood myself to be in, um, that I had kind of created as my personality being human thus far. And that was uh, at the end of 2016, right before I started getting called to grid all over North America. And when I decided to step into unity consciousness, things uh, started triggering me. And I know maybe something that people, it might be a new concept for is uh, this distrust in people who are channeling archangels or anything outside of themselves but this is one of the big triggers that came into me it felt so inauthentic why does somebody have to give away their power to bring in a message that's not of themselves and it's something i never i never publicized or went live with but it was such a a false sense of um uh, again, just another power struggle if if you're gonna say you're channeling yet you're not willing to own that that information as it comes through or have it be a part of yourself and people are having this separation of i'm bringing something that's more powerful mm -hmm. than myself and giving that to the masses you know that was such a huge disconnect for me too as i had made this shift into not the hive mind <laughs> as michelle has taught it and into this unity plane of consciousness that as long as we're all authentic and and in our own heart resonance uh we're going to be the clear channels we no longer have to identify as something outside of ourselves to try and empower messages as they come through because you are the power it's all about claiming your sovereignty and owning who you are in in all space all time and so i just have people look more into that because i know it might be an interesting um concept that came through tonight uh for some people Jesse, you know what? I think you've hit the nail on the head there. I know our time's up. I just want to quickly say that because one of the things that I had great difficulty with was if I would say something, Michelle would give a piece of information. It was like, mm, okay. But then if I channeled that same piece of information, oh, my goodness, it was sent from heaven. This is the truth. But and that was also something that um, I had I had a lot of difficulty with is people would listen to the authority because it came via a channeled message as opposed to what I would say. So mm -hmm. spot on there, Genesee. Thank you, my darling. Thank Boom. you, Michelle. Boom, <laughs> ladies. That was brilliant. I love it. Sovereignty, authenticity, and quite honestly, discernment just folded beautifully into something edible and, and something embodying. Uh, just now. So that was just, uh, gosh, that, that's all, that's something that we can all be chewing on later on tonight and reflecting on well into the, net, the upcoming weeks. 
Thank you so much, both of you. Michelle, thank you for taking the time to be on the show tonight and bringing as much as you could to bring us current on the work that you're doing and the the full body of wisdom that you have been, um, I think, very chosen and choosing yourself to be here on this planet at this time, during this transitionary time in, in human history. Evolution is upon us and we need more that are awake and lucid and and paying attention and also being able to shine that light. So thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much, Tatiana and Genesee as well. It's been such an awesome experience and connecting with the both of you. It's it's lovely. And thank you to all of your um, listeners and uh, watchers and subscribers for <laughs> being with us here yeah, tonight as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you, okay. ladies. Thank you. And Genesee, always an amazing co-host. When you come out with that much gold at the end of the show, I just want to sit there and drag the show on for at least another three hours. But that was <laughs> nail on the head. We are blessed as a community. We are blessed that you join us every Monday, that you are starting to join us again every Thursday night. There are so many amazing guests that are walking that talk. They are leading and foraging forward on this journey. And it's your journey. It's all of our journey. We are not here to be passersby. We're not here to be always the followers and letting someone else take the cue. And we hope that we're empowering you to see that. We're grateful that you come. Consider sponsoring. Consider being a patron so we can continue to show up here Ladies, you're fabulous. I'm so grateful you've been here. And together, together, always remember, we are the solution. are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.